are back, and we are helping you navigate this very questionable market, you know, where people question it a lot. But we're helping you navigate through it with experts such as Steve Carwood, New Hall Escrow, owner Very of New Hall so. Escrow, and Neil Weichel, number one real estate agent in Santa Cruz with Remax of Valencia. And we're on our last segment here going to touch on what everybody wants to know about, Neil, foreclosures. Yeah, we were talking during the break, and, and I think this is a point worth making because truly nobody can sit on this radio program and tell you they know the answer to shadow inventory. And I'm going to explain why in a minute. But um, I was making the comment that we get so much information emailed to us oh, literally yeah, yeah. every day. And in a given week, I probably get between 80 and 100 emails. And if you were to take the news segment of each one, you know, some economic, some real estate related, some interest rate related, some political, if you were to take it, literally 50% would scare you to death and yeah. think it's a ah! terrible time to buy or sell a piece of real estate. And the other 50% would be completely encouraging. And I think one of the things that kind of hangs over this, if I can use a lousy analogy, is this idea of shadow inventory. And shadow inventory, for those that haven't heard the term, is simply this amount of homes, whatever it is, that is supposed to be in the foreclosure process that hasn't yet come to market. Now, why is this a concern to people? Well, because if anybody remembers 2007, we had a flood of foreclosures hit the market, and it took prices down 25% in one year. And what buyer in their right mind is going to want to buy a home in 2012 if there's this threat that this you know, flood of, of foreclosures is going to hit the market? Now, here's what I would say to those people, and nobody can predict the future, but I really truly believe this to be the case. 2007 was the highest foreclosure year that we've had for the amount of homes that hit the market. It has not been anywhere close to that since. In fact, because I handle bank-owned properties, if you go and you meet with the people at the big banks, the Wells Fargo's, the Chase's, I was just in a meeting with Chase right before Christmas, and the, the top people there were saying, we don't know where the homes are. If you talk to people that handle, ba real estate agents that handle bank owned properties, they will tell you they keep being told that their inventory is going to increase, but yet it doesn't come. Now, we're on year four of this, guys. Right, right. For four years, real estate people like myself that handle bank owned properties have been told, you're going to have more inventory this year. After the moratorium, after the holidays, after the election. And I just don't think it's going to happen. I think you are going to continue to see foreclosures be about 15% of the active inventory, which is the number that they're at, and they will continue to serve a buyer need in the marketplace. So why is there this shadow inventory? Why is there this amount of homes that maybe is going to come to market? Well, first of all, I've seen numbers as low as a million and as high as six million, okay, for the amount of homes that potentially could come. And I think what ultimately happens is, is there will be more property that will come to market after this whole robo-signing thing is resolved. Robo-signing is a scary technical term that refers to the fact that the banks and the attorney generals of all the states that these homes are in have been arguing about how they're going to handle this robo-signing thing. I'm not going to explain what it is, but when it's resolved, and it's very political, and it's very, you know, lots of, of jobs on the line kind of a thing, when that's resolved, I think you're going to see a more uh, normal return to properties coming on the market, but there just aren't that many. When they have these big numbers, they're talking about people that are in loan modifications, they're talking about people that have maybe missed a payment or two that have no intention of walking away from their property. So here's my opinion. Here's what I think is going to happen. You're going to continue for probably three or four years to see foreclosures be a part of the real estate inventory. And for many buyers, they won't have any interest in them because they're not interested in buying as-is properties. They're not interested in buying property uh, you know, that needs a lot of work. And the last thing I'll say about this is that they're no longer priced so low that there's such a great deal tearing down the comps. I mean, Fannie Mae, which is the largest holder of foreclosure properties, as a directive, is listing their properties above market value. And you can see it today in our multiple listing. The highest price REOs are Fannie Mae REOs. And the other people that work with Fannie Mae and need to are following their leads. Very often these properties are priced not at some great discount where they're going to drag down the neighborhoods. And the reason is is because the people working for those companies don't want those, that to happen because the politicians that are involved in this don't want it to happen. So you've got this big, messy, kind of hard to understand situation. But the bottom line is don't let shadow, I'm not going to let shadow inventory stop me from buying property this year, I can tell you that. Well, good okay. thing it didn't stop you in 2011, yes. 2010. Because, and I agree with you, great, great inf information from Neil Weichel from Remax of Valencia. And like I said, you can always reach out to us and we can cook you up with Neil at 855-DON-GINO. Um, because that's it, it's very valuable information because everybody's, there's a lot of fear out there. There's been fear out there since 2007, especially 2008. And there's still fear out there. And a lot of that fear is being 
projected just to get ratings sometimes because people love to hear about the sky falling and all that. But there's there's another thing too, Neil. Like you were mentioning, fifteen percent of the market's foreclosure. Correct. And there's there's also something that they got to realize is if the banks will not flood the market to compete with themselves because if they flood the market with too much inventory, then it's going to lower their own sell well, prices. One more thing that I'll say about this, just because people equate shadow inventory as being something that may happen in the future that will cause them to not do something today. And it's very understandable. I completely right. get it. When the, the chairman of the Fed comes out and says, we're looking at renting out these vacant properties, and which happened yesterday, okay? You have to look at behind the scenes what's happening here. They don't want them to hit the market. They don't want, politically, they don't want neighborhoods, and, and believe me, this is happening in to a far greater extent in areas than it's happening in the Santa Clarita Valley. I mean, there's areas in Southern California, the Inland Empire, certainly Las Vegas, parts of Phoenix, but areas like Detroit and Cleveland, where, you know, it's a very, very real concern. And so politically, there's no way you're going to see, you know, markets, quote unquote, flooded with, with foreclosure properties. It's just not going to be politically feasible, let alone economically feasible. So. Yeah, yeah, it could take whole cities down. I mean, you watch the news on the weekend and you'll see these communities in Pittsburgh, sub, sub, uh, suburbs of Pittsburgh, for instance, they haven't had any, any commerce or any, um, any significant uh, uh, income uh, businesses working in that community for a long time, and those communities are just deteriorating beyond repair. The point about shadow inventory is, in my opinion, is simply this. Don't let it stop you from doing what you feel in your gut is the right thing to do, because candidly, it's probably never going to happen the way it did in 2007. That was a very, very traumatic event to a lot of people, myself included. Yeah, yeah, any of us and, in yeah, this industry and, or and, in, and in I this just, city. I just don't see... I don't see it being possible for that to dominate uh, the way it did then. And, and all you have to do is talk to what we call the REO agents. You know, the agents that handle these properties will tell you in 2011 it was the lowest amount of inventory they'd had in the last five years. And I don't think it's going to all of a sudden change in 2012 or 2013. There's some political stuff going on. If you're curious, you know, reach out to Don and Gino and, and they'll put you in the right direction. But um, it's it's... It's something that's really media, you know, frenzy-ish, you know, right, shadow right. inventory. It's very We talk scary. about that all the time. If you look at what's happening, it still represents a relatively small part of the marketplace. People are still buying and selling homes every day. It's going to be with us for a while, so if you're interested, you'll certainly be able to buy some, but it's not going to dominate markets. It's not going to happen. It just won't. Whew, good to hear that. No, I'm you feel better now. <laughs> I feel better now. <laughs> Thank you, Neil. <laughs> Again, Neil Weichel with Remax. And, and uh, to piggyback on that neil what's really nice is we talked about this also is that if you're you know a lot of people are worried about what the media says or when's the right time exactly this is your home people have kind of changed their philosophy uh, have they not from wanting to buy a home and maybe flip it or move into another home eventually down the road or whatever now people kind of go back to where we were <laughs> before the fr the market frenzy meaning the uh, a dramatic appreciation and you could flip a home I mean buy your home for 200 sell for 400 buy a 600,000 home plus with the the flexible lender guidelines we're allowing people to buy homes that were probably um, over their head. Now people are buying homes to live in, are they not? Yeah, we won't see that again. And, and one last real quick little story before we finish off here. I, I had a client tell me yesterday, Neil, I don't know if the market's going to go up or down next year, and I don't care because I'm so excited to buy this home. I'm going to live here for the next 10 years. Bingo. So if it goes up, great. I won't care. I'm not going to sell it, so don't come calling me. And if it goes down, you know, <laughs> I won't be thrilled about it, but it's not going to ruin my life either. This is where my kids are going to go to school. And you know what? I think a lot of people, we, we, in our gut, I'll go back to that thing about our gut, we know or we feel that the worst is over. We, we know that we've got, you know, a couple more years of this kind of challenging market. And you know what? We'll work through it because that's what we do. We did it in the 90s. We'll do it now. And for all we know, this is 1997. We all know what happened in 1999 and 2000. Okay. All of a sudden, you know, good news on top of good news, and all of a sudden the market just started to really, really correct itself. And I don't think we're ever going to see the frenzy that we saw before. Right. There's, uh, you know, it had a lot to do with lending. Right? Yeah, and 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 silliness. But the reality is, is we'll go back to normal where buyers sell and and, and or buyers buy and sellers sell, and everybody has a little bit more clarity, and there's not this confusion that we have today. And we'll all look back on this and say we're not going to do that again. Good and point. Go. And I think we're learning from that. And the, and clarity is a key. And thank you, Neil for giving us a lot more clarity today. My goodness. I mean, good, great, great information. As always, Neil, can't Thanks, wait son. to have you back on the show on a regular basis because you always have 
intuitive and informative information. So thank you, Neil. Again, Neil Weichel with Remax. Thanks. And, of course, my yeah, good buddy excellent. Steve Korn uh, with big, New Hall Escrow. Big lesson learned today is don't be afraid. Reach out and touch base with the professionals in the business and let them tell you what's going on. Look for your options to find out what's happening and make sure you work with the best of the best. And that's what the professional resource group, you've mentioned many times, Don, the PRG group, is all about. We're creating a network of individuals that affect your financial future, and they are the best in the business that could possibly serve you. And that's what we're all about here is helping the consumer make the best decisions for what's going to affect them long term. And